Hello, beautiful person. Greetings from beautiful, not so hot anymore, Winnipeg. Sorry, just need to adjust that a little bit. That should be good. So, my name is Adasa Vitar, and I help stress professionals improve their life by improving their nutrition, their mindset, and sometimes their finances. But today I want to talk about mindset because I want to talk about how your brain is a liar. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? So when we think, right, this is what we are. We all know Descartes, who was actually a very problematic person who was really horrible to animals because he thought they didn't feel pain. He said, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But um, actually, that is probably not true because our thoughts are actually not who we are. Our thoughts are just a set of impulses happening in that brain of ours. And um, what happens is that it lies to us. It tells us things that aren't true. So that is definitely something that uh, we need to be careful with. And the reason I've been thinking about this is, um, <laughs> so here in Winnipeg, the gyms are closed. And so I've been doing a lot more running than I normally would. And um, so I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. I like to listen to them when I'm running. And um, there have been all sorts of different ones. And I'm just looking at my notes here, if you see me looking down. So um, Joe Dis Dr. Joe Dispenza, Rhonda Byrne, Byron Katie, Gay Hendricks, um, Dr. John Sarno, Mel Robbins. These are probably names that you've heard, at least some of them. But the thing is that... Um, they come from different directions. Some of them are medical doctors. Some of them are psychologists. Some of them are spiritual leaders. Some of them are mindset, uh, life coaches, all sorts of different uh, directions. But the interesting thing is that they all end up in the same place. And I find that quite fascinating. Oh, hi, Bonnie. I find that quite fascinating that they all end up in the same place. And what happens with that is that... Um, Basically, they all conclude that your brain is a liar, that it lies to you. And Byron Katie, for example, who's famous for what she calls the work, which is a series of questions in which you uh, investigate your own thoughts. Like if you write down, you know, she says, you know, start by judging other people before you judge yourself. But... Um, starts by uh, asking a bunch of questions about the thoughts that we have. For example, if we say, um, this person should not watch so much television, something like that. And then she asks questions like, is it true um, that this person should not watch so much television? And you're like, yeah, I think it's true. They shouldn't watch so much television. It's not good for them. And then she says, can you absolutely know for sure that it's true? And actually, that is an opinion, <laughs> not an actual fact. And then she carries on. There's four questions and then a turnaround. It's, it's quite fascinating and totally worth looking up and very helpful if you're struggling with the thoughts that are making you unhappy. And that's kind of the point here is that it's, if you're feeling thoughts that are, don't feel good, if you have feelings that don't feel good, like if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling um, fearful, those feelings are caused by thoughts. And a lot of the time, those thoughts are just not true. They're just false beliefs. And many times they were instilled in us as children. You know, when we're children, we don't have much of a filter. People tell us something and we believe it. And if we hear it often enough, it becomes you know, really embedded in our subconscious and it becomes really hard to get rid of. But um, the thing is, if you have a belief that maybe was helpful when you were little, like for example, if you believe that you shouldn't speak, that you should keep your opinions to yourself, that it's not safe to be noticed, then it's really going to hinder you if you want to build a career in which, you know, you need to take responsibility for things and you need to be a leader and people need to notice you and you need to speak out and say what you think. If you are hindered in that by um, 
the fact that you have this subconscious belief that you're probably not even aware of that you shouldn't speak, then yeah, that is going to be a problem. And then what happens, I'm particularly thinking of a Mel Robbins training that I listened to a while back, is that people who have that thought that they shouldn't speak, and they're not even aware of it, when they try to speak, they get physical symptoms of anxiety. And there was one young woman in particular who would burst into tears every time she tried to speak and say her opinion, which is, of course is not really great if you're trying to build a career, right? So Mel helped her figure out the feelings in her body and because she couldn't catch the thought as it was happening because it was completely subconscious. Like she didn't consciously think, oh, I'm about to speak, I shouldn't speak. But her body remembers, your body is where your subconscious uh, hangs out pretty much and then so you'll get physical symptoms from these um, subconscious thoughts even if you're not aware of the actual thoughts and so this young woman she uh, would feel it starting basically in her belly and coming up to her chest and by the time it made it to her eyes it was too late she was crying but she learned to recognize it as it was starting to come to her and um, she was able to uh, recognize it and take action and do things to distract herself from what was happening there. And eventually she was able to get rid of that deeply embedded thought, but it takes a lot of work. This is not something you can do right away. So that's, um, let me just double check my notes. I don't want to miss anything. So uh, yeah, so each of the teachers that I named, and uh, if you want, you can just drop me a message and I can send you a list of uh, of those teachers and it was really interesting they're all different things come from completely different backgrounds and different sets of ideas and they all end up in the same place which is that we have a whole bunch of subconscious beliefs that we're not even aware of and um, for example a lot of people believe that they're not worthy of love and care and then they end up you know with people who do not treat them with love and care and they wonder why they keep choosing these people and there's reasons for that and but Getting that subconscious thought is really hard. So um, I'm not uh, here to tell you exactly how to do that. I would recommend if you really have an issue with thoughts that you're having trouble with, then uh, you need a therapist or a life coach, not somebody on Facebook. Uh, I am a life coach, but I'm not. You're a life coach at the moment. Um, so, but, the th but basically what all of these uh, different different practitioners have come to is that your thoughts cause your feelings. And so even though you may not be aware of the actual thought, which is causing the trouble, you do know the feeling and it's a bad feeling. And you might feel anxious, you might get a stomach ache, you might get a headache, you might just feel all choked up, all sorts of physical sensations that we have when we have a feeling in our body that is basically caused by a thought. And very often this thought is one that we really don't want to have anymore. So this is just something that I wanted to share with you. These are, so basically the, the simple thing to do, if not necessarily easy, but simple, if you find yourself with this sort of thing is to pay attention to when you have a feeling that doesn't feel good and see if you can cut it off at the pass and stop it, just like that young woman who was coaching with um, Mel Robbins was able to do with help. I mean, obviously this is not something that, you know, if it were easy, you would already have done it. But um, anyway, if you would like some more information about all these uh, great people that I've been learning from, just drop me a message. I can send you a list of their names and their most important works and uh, you can find out for yourself how that works. So you have a great evening. Remember, I love you. And I'll talk to you again soon.